In this video, I'm going to break down every single thing you need to do step by step to land a software engineering internship in 2025. <music> I've built on everything I've learned over the last few years of applying to my own internships, what worked and what didn't, and I'm going to give you all of that information in around 10 minutes. This will include everything from how to structure that perfect resume to actually stand out to recruiters, what coding projects you should build to maximize your chances of getting hired, and how to actually get good at lead code so you can ace your technical interviews. The best part is I'm not only gonna be telling you what to do, but I'm gonna be showing you exactly what I'm doing as somebody in the exact same position as you. If you're new here, my name is Eric and I'm documenting my entire journey to becoming a multi six figure software engineer. So smash that subscribe button to join us in our journey. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the perfect software engineering resume. A lot of aspiring software engineers will make the very common mistake of spending hours and hours learning how to code, but not even 30 minutes on their resume, and then they wonder why they don't get hired. You have to realize that your resume is the only thing that's telling a recruiter whether or not you're a good candidate for a role. A recruiter will also only spend on average of 7 seconds on your resume to determine if you're a good fit. And with all of these new online applications, you also have to make sure your resume is ATS friendly. That means applicant tracking system and it's basically an automatic AI that parses through your resume to find keywords and see if they match a certain job description. Because of that, you absolutely need to be using this resume template. And I'll leave a link to this template in the description below. Okay, so let's break down everything that's on it. First, at the top, you have a header with your phone number, email, and most importantly, your LinkedIn, GitHub, and your coding portfolio. As a software engineer, both your GitHub and your coding portfolios are arguably just as important as your resume, if not more. They're extensions to your resume and they showcase to recruiters exactly what you're actually capable of. Think if you're a recruiter, if you could actually see the coding project that some candidate built firsthand, it might make them stand out so much more. So I'll talk about the GitHub and coding portfolio right after this. The next thing on your resume should be your education at the top. I would include your major and minor, your GPA only if it's above a 3.5. If it's not, don't worry at all. And relevant courses. I know that's a bit controversial, but I've done so much research on what the big tech companies want and it seems to be a great fit. And honestly, the way I see it by including relevant coursework, you're now hitting more buzzwords on that AI screening. Okay, now for the work experience itself, you need to be doing these three things. First, you need to be following the accomplished X through Y using Z method when you write out your bullet points. In these bullet points, you also need to be using business logic. For example, how much money did you save? More often than not, the recruiter that's seeing this is not actually technically knowledgeable. They're very familiar with what kind of business impacts you have, but not the technical side of things. Now, finally, you need to be quantifying your achievements with numbers and bolding all of your key achievements to draw the attention of the recruiters to exactly what you want them to see immediately. Now onto the coding project section. Especially if you don't have that much experience, this is easily the most important part of your resume. For each coding project, make sure you're including the source code as well as ideally a deployment link. Now, this is every coding project I have on my resume and why. First is my full stack application, which is a McGill exam scheduler that I built with React.js, Spring Boot, and Postgres. This coding project demonstrates my ability to work as a full stack developer, which is invaluable for companies. By working in both the front end and back end, I show that I have full experience working with APIs, database management, and even building out user interfaces. Also, the fact that it's scaled to a thousand users shows some sort of robustness with my code. Next is my startup, Empor, which is a university student exclusive marketplace. By building my own startup, I show my ability to work in a fast paced environment and I could showcase my entrepreneurial mindset in both the technical and business side of things. Finally, I have my Premier League match predictor, which I built with Scikit-Learn and the Random Forest Classifier. This not only showcases my ability to apply AI to real life aspects, but it's also in something that I'm extremely passionate about. And if I could share that passion with a recruiter, it will help me stand out in interviews. Now, finally, I personally have a leadership section because I'm using this resume to apply to the big tech roles, but this is not essential at all. What you should do, however, is include your technical skills at the bottom. Enumerate all of them exactly like I have it, because that way not only can a recruiter see everything you're capable of immediately, but that ATS system will pick up all of your keywords very easily. Now building on that resume, this is my coding portfolio and why I have everything on it. 
especially in 2024, your coding portfolio is as essential as your resume as a software engineer. First, I have an about me page where I include all of my technical skills, including the coding languages I know, the frameworks I know, and any development tool I know. If you do this, do not put progress bars like 67% of Java because what in the world does that even mean? Next, I included a brief work experience section where people could see everything I've done just like my resume. Now, most importantly, I have all of my coding projects that I want to showcase. This includes the title to each coding project as well as the technologies used in the bottom. Most importantly, I made sure every single link was clickable so someone could actually see my work firsthand. Finally, I added a contact me page with a LinkedIn and my email because the whole point of this portfolio is to showcase your skills to a recruiter. Okay, now finally you have your GitHub. Recruiters who are interested in you as a candidate will often go check out your GitHub. So if it looks something like mine, you're giving yourself that advantage amongst all these other candidates. Now, the first thing you might notice is all of this stuff with my tech stack and everything in my readme file. So let me show you exactly what I did to do that. Just Google GPRM and then you'll find this website that will generate the profile for you. All you have to do is enter your username and a bunch of other things like what languages you know, and it'll give you that readme file that I used. Now, the actual important part of your GitHub are all of these individual repositories. Think of a repository as a folder that contains your code. For example, if you don't open up my McGill exam schedule, you could then go ahead and see all of my front end and back end code. So let's say a recruiter wanted to find somebody that has capabilities with Spring Boot and they go ahead and see that I actually built out a coding project with that first hand, they will automatically think I'm a good fit for the role. They could then also go ahead and see how often you've committed to your repositories. While we're talking about GitHub, this is literally the only way to get better at coding. For those of you that don't know, that basically means I've already coded over a thousand times this year alone. Because of that, I've grown so much as a developer over the past year. At the beginning of the year, I wasn't even that good a developer, I'd say, but now I'm able to build out my own startup from scratch with barely any help from other developers. All it took was a little bit of work on the side and something I like to call project-based learning. It's all well and good watching a bunch of these tutorials on YouTube or reading documentation but that does not make you a developer. The only way you'll ever actually learn is by building something yourself from scratch. Don't get hung up on what the perfect project idea is. The way I like to think about it is you should build something that you might use in your real life. For example, one of the best projects on my resume was this McGill exam scheduler just because I found it a pain in the ass to have to go and manually add my exams to my schedule. And I had over a thousand users on that small project, plus it got me connected to a Microsoft employee. So if you're ever having any doubts about how to become a better programmer, literally just start right now. If you want to triple your chances of getting that software engineering internship, I highly recommend you use this strategy of mass applying. Last year alone, I applied to over 300 different internships. I ended up getting like 30 interviews, but most importantly, I ended up actually getting four job offers. The main takeaway here is that sometimes quantity is in fact better than quality when it comes to applications. And applying early is honestly the most important part behind all of it. So let me put you onto the resource I use. First, head over to this repository, which is Summer 2025 Tech Internships by Simplify. Every single day, they post all the new job postings that were uploaded that day. This is for all different roles in software engineering, and they have a link for you to go ahead and apply to them directly. That means every single day, I'm applying to around five different job postings. Now, this is how you could actually become a master at LeetCode to ace all of your technical interviews. The first thing you're going to do is head over to neatcode.com. They're going to give you this comprehensive roadmap for you to follow so you're not just attempting questions blindly. It has a comprehensive list of the most 75 commonly asked questions by big tech companies. Now my favorite part is, every time I don't understand a question, I head over to the video solution. He perfectly explains everything better than any teacher ever has for me. Now for every single Lico question I do, I head over to my neat code notes. Here, I write down certain things like what syntax in Python was helpful, what approach actually helped me solve that particular problem, and I also color code my questions so I know what I struggled on. That way, whenever I have an interview coming up, I just go ahead and reference my document to quickly cram in advance, and it's always been very helpful for me.
That's going to be it for me today. The last thing I'll say is to never give up. Last year, it took me so many applications and it's so easy to get so demoralized when you constantly get those rejection emails or you're even failing your OAs or your interviews. I want to tell you that I promise you with a little bit of hard work and dedication and most importantly, perseverance, you will get that job. Just make sure you do every single thing I mentioned in this video. Fill out the perfect resume with your GitHub and coding portfolio. Make sure that you also have a bunch of good quality coding projects. Try to get as much experience as possible in the field. Practice your lead code every single day. That's probably the hardest one for you guys. And finally, just keep on applying. For more content like this, or if you found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.